From the outside looking in, it might seem like there are willing participants or maybe at worst, exploited individuals. But the reality is that victims and survivors of the industry actually do experience force, fraud, or coercion that make them trafficking survivors. The majority of the women in the illicit massage industry are actually immigrant women from East Asia. And so as part of the package to travel to the United States, they need to take out loans to pay the travel fee, or they're indebted to the person or the organization that's going to help bring them over here. They are promised a job and a place to live, but the place also costs money for them to stay. So the system is set up to create a set of economic coercive situations where it's really hard for women to leave or when they get close, their debt increases and it's hard for them to break that cycle. Survivors of the illicit massage industry aren't pimped and controlled in the same way as domestic trafficking victims. People typically hear scenarios of physical violence from traffickers, kidnappings, chains, but in fact, within the illicit massage industry, there's much more psychological coercion and the physical violence is coming from customers. There was a study in New York that has shown that over two thirds of the women in the illicit massage industry are undocumented and traffickers would exploit that vulnerability. They will constantly remind them that they could be arrested, they could be deported, and that they should not expect any civil, legal, or immigration protections. Employers know to exploit the lack of information that undocumented workers have to coerce them to do the things that they want them to do. There are so many underlying harder to see forms of victimization, and especially if you don't have the cultural lens, it's very easy to miss. Culture is not the issue. It is the way that exploiters and traffickers use it to victimize people. One of them being collectivism. This understanding that every single decision that is made is thought of in the context of not only yourself. Duties are owed to family members, to elders, and to their community. And so any decision that is made is really thought about in terms of, will it bring shame to the community? Does it look bad on my community? Will people judge me for my actions because I was told that I made a bad decision? They are told that when you step outside the doors of this business, people will only see you as a prostitute, not as a victim of what you've experienced. Chinese women are conditioned to endure. Traffickers know that the women will have to endure because otherwise they would lose face. It is shameful to admit that it happened and it is shameful to receive help. The hypersexualization of Asian women is not new. It has been happening over centuries. Coming from a long history of the media portraying Asian women as sexualized beings perpetuates this notion that any Asian-owned business with Asian females working in there are wanting to provide sexual services for you. Meanwhile, many individuals I've met from these settings only seek to actually provide massage services and in those settings are sexually assaulted raped and forced to do things that they don't want to do as protective measures. Asian women have been dealing with harmful stereotypes, systemic racism, and compounding inequalities, not just during the pandemic, not just during the Atlanta shootings, but for most of their lives. If they're experiencing exploitation, victimization, violence, abuse of any kind, they need to have options to know how they can get out of that situation. Instead of asking why people don't just leave illicit massage businesses, we should be asking what opportunities we are creating for people so that they can leave. We need to hold accountable anyone who is profiting off of the system, anyone who is buying into and benefiting, and anyone who is denying that the system of exploitation exists even in the first place and normalizing what is happening. We need to stand with women in the illicit massage industry to ensure that violence against them is not silenced. We must care about what is happening to our fellow human beings. We must care because human trafficking is happening in these settings. We need to commit to becoming the community that they can trust and rely on.